it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1170, the Garden Bench Pop-Up, and you can check out all of our die designs at KarenBerniston.com. Now, although the Garden Bench was requested as a re-release, I can't really call this a re-release in that it has been completely redesigned. It is now a glue-in design instead of a cut-in design, and it comes with six pieces instead of three. The paper line I'm using today is Simple Stories Simple Vintage Lemon Twist. You choose your card size, but to hide the garden bench you need at least four and a quarter inches on the width for your card and at least four inches when the card is closed on the height. Now I've chosen to do a larger card. I'm doing a five inch wide by six inch tall card top fold. And then I just added panels of paper to both sides. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6. Okay, so if you just die cut it, it will look like this, but you also have the option to add a stitch line detailing to the back decorative portion of the bench, and to take advantage of that stencil feature on the die, just put the piece back in the die and then use a pen through all of the stitch marks. Or if you wanted those to be raised stitch marks, you could emboss the die. The die set comes with a small and a large optional extra pop-up platform for animating things in the bench. There is a little arrow at one end that's die cut into those pieces. Okay, the first thing I want to do is find the three folds in each piece. So starting with the small one, there is a fold right next to the arrow tapered tab. And then just a little bit further down, there's another fold. And then next to the tapered tab at the other end. I find it easier to fold towards the fold line on those three little folds. So once I've found them all, then this is what that little platform will look like from the side. Okay, now I'm repeating that process for the large one. So the first fold that I'm going to find is next to the arrow tapered tab. And again, I think it's easiest to put my thumbnail into the score line that the machine has made and fold toward myself. And then just pinching all three of those folds in the same direction I'll once again have a platform that looks like this from the side. And since I plan to use a pillow on both sides of the bench, I am using the small one again, a second small one, just doing the exact same thing. Okay, switching to the bench, the folds I want to find first are the ones out on the ends of the bench legs. And so I always find it easier to just put my thumbnail into the score line that the machine has made and then fold towards my thumb first. So folding towards the front of the bench is really just about finding the folds, but then now I'm going to reverse them because they do need to be mountain folds folding to the back of the bench. The next fold I'm going to find is the one that goes right through the middle of the bench. So there's a score line out through those arms on the side, and then through the middle of the bench, it's just next to that first slat. You'll see that you can just pinch those three spots down to fold the bench right in the center. Now I want to reverse the fold on the arms of the bench. And I think the easiest way to do that is actually just to get my finger underneath the arm, but in front of the bench on both sides. Then I just slide my fingers down until they hit where the cut lines end, and then I can kind of pinch those little slats right there. For the upper part, they pivot on these little score lines right here. So just finding those score lines. Now you can see that I have the shape of the bench and I'm able to collapse it down and bring it back out. Adding the extra pop-up platforms is optional. You can see that the bench works fine without them, but if you do want to add them, now is the time. So I find the arrow end of my little pop-up platform and I add a strong adhesive behind that tab. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle and we do sell those items on our website. Now I can put that anywhere along that first little section of the bench. And I just slide that tab through and pinch it so that it's attached to the back of the bench. Okay, and then now I need to flatten the bench out so that I can attach the other tapered tab. So the adhesive goes on the back of the tapered tab. And then in the flat position, it will tell me where that tab goes because in the flat position, it'll show me which slat it goes through to attach to the back of the bench. And in this case, the smaller one, it goes through the first slat. Those little pop-up platforms are very user-friendly because they are designed just to straddle the bench exactly where they need to go. So it's hard to get those wrong. And then you just kind of make sure that it's coming forward as you close the bench. 
And then now you've got that little small pop-up platform to pop up and pop down with the bench. Moving on to the large platform, it goes on the exact same way. So the adhesive goes on the back of the tapered tab that has the arrow cut into it. Then I just choose a spot along the bench. In this case, I'm going to go into that little second section and then pinch that so it attaches to the back of the bench, just like the first one. And then with the bench in the flat position, I'll be able to tell where the other tab attaches. So just flattening the bench, you'll see that the large one goes down to the second slat. And then once again, I just get the tab through the opening and press it so that it attaches to the back of the bench. And then just making sure that it's coming forward as I close the bench. Now you can see I have both of those attached. And since I decided that I wanted pillows on both sides of my bench, I'm going to add another small one on the right side. So just repeating the exact same process, adhesive on the tapered tabs in the flat position, I span them across the bench. Okay, now I'm ready to add the bench to the card. So I do that in the flat position. I flatten everything out so that I can get the center line of the bench right in the center fold of the card. And of course I can slide that anywhere along the fold. For this card, I'm just going to center it. Okay, the goal here is not to let the bench slide at all while I add adhesive to the upper two tabs and kick them under and attach them to the card. So you can see where I've put the adhesive. I've got my thumbnails keeping that bench securely in the center of the card. And then I just kick that tab under and attach it to the card. And then the same thing on the other side, just keeping everything straight and in the center line of the card, kick those tabs under and attach them to the card. Once one half of the bench is in the card, then it becomes easier because it's not going to slide out of the center fold on you when you turn the card over and do the exact same thing for the bottom two tabs. So adhesive on the tabs and then just keeping everything nice and flat, kick those under and attach them to the card. Because I flattened the bench, then most likely when I look at it from the side and start to close it, the arms are going to try to become valley folds instead of mountains. So before I close the card, I need to go in there from the sides and make sure that those arms of the bench are coming forward into the card like mountain folds. And then once I have it like this from the side where I can see that everything is going in the right direction, then I can close the card and give it a good press. So it really is a simple assembly on the garden bench and you can see that's now installed inside the card. It's popping up, it's popping down and it's ready for some decorations. There is a pillow in the set as well as a small flower. So when you're doing those cards for spring and summer themes, then that little flower fits nicely in the middle of the pillow. And if you don't want to have to add a rhinestone or something for the center, you can take advantage of the stencil feature to just go through the die with a pen and add the center. That flower is actually the same size and shape as the flowers that make the border in our long nature edges too. So if you ever need a flower to quickly glue over the top of that border and change some of the colors, just grab this one out of the garden bench. I decided to add a little bit of ink around the edges of my fringed pillow. And then now that is ready to go on the bench. I'm using the little small supports for the pillows. So I just add my adhesive to the front of the small support and then the pillow just presses up against it at whatever angle I would like. And closing the card and giving it a good press is the best way to make sure I have a good bond. Okay, then I repeated that exact same process to add the other pillow. There is a die in the set that will cut a little sprig of grass and that looks particularly cute up against the front legs of the bench. So to add that, I would just add my adhesive to the front leg of the bench and then press the grass to it. And if I lay the grass down in front of the leg first, I can choose a location to make sure that the outer blade of grass is hidden by the card when the card is closed. Our new tiny gnomes look particularly cute sitting in the bench. And for this card, since there were lemonade elements in the paper, I went with the lemonade pieces from our picnic elements die set. So just like with the small supports that are supporting the pillows, on the large one, I just add the adhesive to the front of the platform and then press my tiny gnome to the platform. And I can always give that a good press by closing the card. 
And then I kind of debated where to put the pitcher of lemonade, but in the end I decided it would look cute just on the ground, sort of tucked behind the grass. So I'm attaching that to the leg of the bench. And then over the seam between the two papers, I'm going to add a thin strip of a coordinating pattern paper from the same line. There was a cool piece of pattern paper that had that sweet life little area. So I decided to cut it out using a rectangle out of our slim flaps and frames and then dress it up a little bit by inlaying the diamond border out of the same set. And then since I had that set out anyway, I thought it would look cool to put some banners across the top of the card using the flower from the garden bench as the decor. The pattern papers were just so gorgeous that the card front was easy. I just used a piece of pattern paper and added a tiny gnome sipping some lemonade, plus three pieces of grass and two flowers from the garden bench. When closed, my card measures five inches wide by six inches tall. It folds nice and flat, so I can mail that in an A7 envelope and it won't require extra postage. And you really can decorate that garden bench for any season or theme. In addition to the tiny gnomes and the long nature edges too, which make great complements to the garden bench, we also have a new hello die set and a new street lantern pop-up that work wonderfully with the bench. Since card size is always up to you, you can explore doing a little bit smaller cards, like this one's a four and a half inch square. The garden bench makes great holiday cards. So this one's a five by seven so that I have room for two street lantern pop-ups on either side of the bench. Or a five by six top fold will give you room for one street lantern pop-up next to the garden bench. And that tiny gnome set does have the pieces to be able to decorate them as Christmas gnomes. I love to end assembly videos by looking at some cards by our very talented international design team. Karen Aiken made this beautiful welcome fall card with the garden bench, and I like her choice to add leaves to the front of the pillows. Kelly Booth has put the little bunny from the spring animals in the garden bench, and all of our little animal sets will work wonderfully in the bench. Sandy Diller has the garden bench in this holiday card with three street lanterns behind it and then used lights to light up the lanterns. Lois Bach with this bright and sunny Thinking of You garden bench card. I love all the groovy details in this card by Fran Sabad. Karen Aiken made this beautifully elegant Let It Snow garden bench card. And then Frances Byrne shows that you can use the garden bench in a slimline card. The garden bench pop-up die set is available now from a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can find out information about purchasing these dies, as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.